Delighted to say I'm joined with Michael O'Neill, the Northern Ireland football manager, the man of the moment. Michael, we have spoken in the past whenever you were a player. We have spoken in the past whenever you've been a manager. And when things haven't been going well, and now here you are on the cusp of something great. And Northern Ireland fans are now daring to dream. Are they entitled to do that? Yeah, I think so. Um, that's what we wanted to create. You know, when I took the job, I knew that would be difficult. Um, you know, the team had finished the previous uh, European champ qualification campaign for, for Poland poorly, you know, three or four poor results, and it all seemed a little bit flat. There was a number of players that were coming to the end of their international careers as well. So, um, you know, the, the World Cup qualifying came campaign that I undertook to begin with was, was a disappointment results wise but I think there was a lot of positives in some of the performances and uh, that's what I sort of clung on to and you know, we've seen that obviously in this campaign with the, you know, the four victories out of the five games, you know, Big Kyle focused and playing at the top of his game and, and the team, you know, playing at the top of their game I think in, in basically nearly all the games and um, yeah I think what we wanted, and I said this to the players always at the outset, is that you know we have to create expectation, um, and international football is not just about gathering caps. It's about trying to win games, and it's about trying to you know instill national pride and to give people the the, the dream that we can go to a major finals again. And certainly this campaign is is providing us with that opportunity. We're only halfway through it, um, but we we have given ourselves a great chance, and you know we have a massive game now coming up in June. Michael, you talked there about the fact that uh, the race to Poland, you know, you had some very disappointing results. But fair to say too, look, no matter what sport you play, no matter what level, you need a wee bit of luck. You need mm -hmm. the ball to go for you. And we've been fortunate too as well. You know, I, I know you make your own luck. It's all cliches. Mm -hmm. But the wee bit of luck has been going for us as well too. Things are just moving along nicely for us. Yeah, I think so. I think in the, in the previous campaign, I felt we had no luck whatsoever in the, in the, for uh, the qualification for Brazil. You know, I looked at a number of games, Luxembourg and Azerbaijan at home, where we should have won the game comfortably and we drew both games. Um, we were slightly unlucky not to win the game out in Portugal. And the Portugal game here for at home, for example, we were 2 1 up cruising, 10, 10 men against, or sorry, 11 against 10, and we looked really, really strong. And then suddenly the game turned on its head and Ronaldo scored a hat trick. And we, uh, so, you know, there was a lot of disappointments. I, th I felt we didn't get very much that went for us. And I think we have earned our luck in this. I, you know, I think that when I look at the games, you know, we came back against Hungary when maybe in the past there wouldn't have been enough character in the team to do that. And uh, Kyle was very influential on that. Um, I think we, we, we played well against the Pharaohs. We played well against Greece. And, um, you know, the, the, the defeat in Romania was disappointing, but we were down two or three significant players for that game. And it's difficult when we, when we don't have everyone at our, our strongest. And again, as I say, I felt, you know, for large portions of the game against Finland, we were totally dominant. So, um, you know, I think the team's in a good place. I think that uh, there's a real belief in the squad that, and particularly for the older ones, I think they realise this is going to be their last opportunity. And so, so for likes of, you know, Aaron Hughes, Roy Carroll, Gareth McCauley, um, you know, Chris Baird, even Chris Brunt into that, some of the players, you know, they may see this as their final opportunity and, um, you know, they're determined to try and take it. I was going to mention the likes of those lads there because you deserve a huge amount of praise as the manager. But uh, these lads seem to have a new lease of life, you know what I mean? They're playing out of their skins. Mm -hmm. And they do a wee bit like, you know, they, they, they're a bit almost like, I'm not here to gather another cap, I'm here mm -hmm. to achieve. And they seem to be pushing on these younger lads as well. And the blend has been superb. Yeah, I think that was important, you know, that it's important to keep this, the senior players on board, which we, we have managed to do. And, you know, one or two, I think, had considered retirement at a certain point in time. And it's understandable when you play international football for 10 or 12 years, there comes a point where you maybe start to think, well, you know, two or three years of club football is a lot more lucrative than two or three years of international football. And uh, so players, you know, that. I would never criticise them for prioritising that situation, but thankfully, as I say, we've kept them all on board. And what we've managed to do is bring in, um, you know, the younger players, the Conor McLaughlins, for example, who, who've come in, Daniel Lafferty, Shane Ferguson, um, Ollie Norwood coming in and ha have all given us, uh, I think, strengthened the squad and have established themselves. But also around the squad, it's the players on the edges of things now who are starting. Stuart Dallas, another player that's come in recently and uh, has strengthened the squad. And that's what we must continue to do. You know, we still don't have enough players to choose from, if I'm honest, and we don't have enough players playing at a high enough level. 
but what we do have is a really strong group that's together. Um, I think they're very well prepared in terms of what we do, get, uh, putting them on the pitch, and they believe in it. And uh, I think now we have, you know, confidence is high, and uh, you know it's down to the, it's down to the, how those players have applied themselves. And um, you know I've just sort of guided them, and and they've got that bit of belief now. And as I say, you know, hopefully that can continue. I think you've been a wee bit too uh, um, modest there by saying you've just guided them because I look at also the team, the way you built off the park as well, the, the likes of the coaching staff and the lads that you brought in, you know, Jimmy Nick, now your assistant, you've got Jim in there, Jim Magilton, and it's a very strong body of experienced lads who've been there, done that and bought the T-shirt for Northern Ireland and they're, they're, they've really bought into it as well too, haven't they? Yeah, I think so. When I came in, there was basically no structure there, to be honest. Um, and and it, it was difficult to see, to develop that, because, you know, I, I had to put together a plan for, for the IFA board to say, this is what we are going to have to do, and we're going to have to invest in this, and we're going to have to resource this properly. And one of the things that was important for me was to, to bring in ex-international players to, to help with that process. And... You know, we've done that, you know, the likes of Healy's involved, David's involved with like the 16s and 17s. And, you know, he's only at the start of his coaching career, but, he's, you know, he's fine for him to be working with that level of players. The players just, you know, are still in awe of David Healy. And mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, it gives them a huge significance of what playing for Northern Ireland means. Stephen Craig is another player, a player who, you know, gathered over 50 caps despite, you know, not playing for the most glamorous clubs, but a player who maximised what he got out of his career because of his level of application and his, his professionalism and and that's another a player like Healy who always turned up always there always, always there. there and and that's what we want the young players to see and we want the young players to be around obviously Jim as you mentioned Damien Johnson now is coming in to assist as well and you know Stephen Robinson's still around it even though he's at Motherwell and obviously Jimmy Nicholl coming in and you know Jimmy has obviously the two World Cups behind him mm -hmm. and uh you know, it, it, it was a, an easy transition for me to bring Jimmy in. And uh, I just think it was really important for us to continue to try and develop, trying to, to build our young players, build our young squads. And, to, you know, I, like I, I've seen players, for example, Liam Donnelly is a good example of a young player that when I first took the job, I, I, I worked... Young and Gallon fellow. Yeah, I worked in a training session with Stephen Robinson and Liam Donnelly was in that training session and... You know, three years later, I'm putting them on the pitch in Chile in a senior international game, and that's we want our young players to identify and to be close to the whole thing because you know we, there's always a risk that we may lose players to the Republic of Ireland, but I think that's a risk now that exists less and less as I think the players really see a clear pathway uh, for international football uh, with ourselves. We talk about players. You're talking about experienced squad players, players off the field to play, and then we have to go and talk about a player who is in the form of his life. I mean, you get a player who can score goals like Kai Lafferty, the way he's going to minute, a bit like Healy, uh, many years ago in the European mm. Championships. You always have a chance. Yeah, I, I think it's impossible to qualify for a tournament or impossible to win a tournament for the. T you know, you look at the, the countries that go on and win these tournaments. They always have a player at the top of his game, a goal scorer. They always have someone that's coming out of a tournament with five, six goals. Kyle obviously has five goals for us at the minute in the qualification. And he's he's actually a little bit, you know, he's not in a great situation club-wise. You know, the move to Norwich hasn't worked out for him as well as he would have liked. In his defence, he went to Turkey because he wanted to be match fit for Northern Ireland games. So I think that's a credit to him. And, um, you know, when, when he puts it all together... Kyle is a handful for any defender at any level. I look at the game in Greece and the two centre-backs for Greece play for Roma and Borussia Dortmund and he, he ran them ragged that night. Um, we've seen him dominate the, the centre-backs of uh, Finland, one who's at Ajax and is signing, I think, for Lazio. So it just gives you an indication for him of what he's capable of. And this campaign, he's, he's brought it all together. In the last campaign, for example, he only started four games for us because mm -hmm. of injury and because of suspension. And he is vital for us. You know, we don't have a, a ready-made replacement for Kyle, if I'm honest. We have players who are um, in development and players that possibly can, can get to that level. But at this minute in time, you know, he, he really has been the focal point of it all. And I think that's been important for him. It's been important for the team. But I think he, he recognises what, you know, the likes of your Davises and your Bairds and those types of players have given over the years as well. And um, I think he starts to appreciate that now as well. And, you know, he's in a good place for Northern Ireland and, and, you know, long may that continue as well. 
he always had it too, because I remember when we were out in Sweden, in all Ireland, Sweden, against uh, you know, Ibrahimovic and people like that. He scored a classic. Yeah, I remember the cracker goal. goal like, you know, yeah. he always had it. It just was getting it all together. Yeah, that has to be credit to you as well. But you know, because there was a time where he had almost let himself down. You pulled him to the side, had a long chat with him. To be fair to you, you did that. To be fair to him, he bought into it. Yeah, he did. You know, I think pl player international football is a. It's always a choice. It's a different. It's not your livelihood. You don't have the same control over the players that maybe you would do as a club manager. And you know, Kyle, Kyle went through a phase where I, I, I felt he maybe, not that he wasn't committed, but he just very distracted. You know what I mean? He maybe had a lot of other things going on in his life as well, which was uh, so. So playing at international level maybe wasn't at the forefront of of his focus. And uh, you know. I just went when we got him in for the hungry game. I just sat him down. And I said, "Look, you know, this is the chance for you to, you know, get things back on track." And I think he recognised that, and he thinks that, you know, I treat him with responsibility. I treat him as an adult, which he is, and you know, I think he he, he responds to that. I, I like him in the squad because he brings life to the squad. You know, there's no doubt about that. I like having him around, um, and he, he's great to have in the squad. And 